thank you for your generosity, Chairman. I'm trying to see, do I recognize anybody here? But uh, let me uh, see if we can um, look at something of the experience um, uh, in the uh, retrofitting of the Irish building stock and maybe also even try uh, a little dangerously perhaps to look, to look ahead. Um, but uh, firstly, to, to remind us of the uh, authorities' uh, vision and mission, um, we see uh, Ireland as a, a recognized uh, global leader in sustainable energy. And making the distinction, uh, as always, a, a society that is fully engaged in the uh, sustainable energy agenda and an economy that is fully exploiting the, the opportunities, global opportunities, uh, in these solutions. And then uh, the authorities' mission is to help in this uh, process of, of transformation. Um, a, a society based on sustainable energy structures, technologies, and practices. And in executing that mission, uh, there are uh, three priorities in our work. Uh, and energy efficiency, where our focus today um, is, is uh, first, implementing the, uh, the strongest possible uh, energy efficiency uh, actions. Um, but in parallel with this, uh, accelerating the development and adoption of low carbon uh, energy technologies uh, to exploit our magnificent uh, uh, renewable energy resources. And while doing uh, all of this, developing the, the enterprises, bringing together the actors that are needed in order to uh, bring this to pass. Um, it's, it's probably for this audience to, to put the case for efficiency um, there may be a degree of redundancy, but I think it's no harm to uh, recognize the extent of the, of the challenge. Uh, this is uh, the wedge diagram for the in International Energy Agency, the World Energy Outlook, uh, where we're here looking at the uh, emissions and it has somehow become um, somehow le less fashionable to refer to the climate imperative. But I think we do need to remind ourselves that the emissions... Um, uh, unlike a lot of these uh, uh, y-axes, this does start at, at zero, and we're looking at kind of current emissions and the business as usual projection, and then what's involved in turning that down to levels that may be compatible with the continuation of our civilizations. So the time scale here is over 40, 40 years, and these actions, uh, there's an, uh, a menu of strategies, and what's I suppose important for us today is that more than half of these are in the efficiency area, and then you have uh, 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 others of, of the technologies um, uh, available. Um, this is a diagram which my, my colleagues give out to me for showing because they, they feel it's a little indulgence of me, the Sankey diagram, but it is a very powerful summary of the whole of our Irish, uh, uh, whole of our energy economy because what we, what we see here is uh, on the left hand side the inputs and on the outside uh, on the right hand side the the outputs and it's it serves to remind us how heavily dependent we still are on oil and gas and that situation is going to isn't going to tra change radically in the short to medium term uh, on the right hand side of course we see the functions uh, uh, which this energy is used and we also see the uh, the waste uh, the waste streams and the size of the transport factor is a, uh, is, a, is a reminder to us that we're not dealing with the full agenda uh, today. Um, a tiny little thing up there in the top right-hand side, you have contrasting uh, over the last 20 years the level of EU dependency on imported uh, energy and the Irish one, where, of course, we're hovering a little below 90% uh, dependent on imported energy. So we have a challenge. The minister has touched on the, um, uh, the, the, uh, the gap that Better Energy is now addressing in our targets for 2020. You're familiar with the 2020 uh, uh, commitments on greenhouse gas emissions, on energy uh, uh, conservation, and on renewables. But on the uh, central one, the energy efficiency, uh, the gap that uh, remains to be addressed, and as the minister said, uh, the, the um, programs now designed to meet or indeed slightly uh, exceed uh, uh, that gap. 
Another analysis which um, many of you will have seen before is the one which we uh, carried out a, a, a couple of years ago with M uh, the McKinsey uh, consultants. Um, and this uh, marginal cost of abatement of carbon emissions, uh, on the y-axis we have uh, the abatement cost per ton of uh, CO2 equivalent, and on this we have the, the impact, the uh, abatement potential. And while this is not intended to, to describe a, a rank order of measures, because while we of course uh, need to look at efficiency measures, but in, in parallel we also need to look at the measures that are going to make the uh, big impact in meeting the demands over the, over the longer term. It, this does highlight, of course, that uh, the, the uh, uh, retrofit activities are all concentrated in this area uh, of negative societal cost. And bear in mind that this uh, curve, this particular one, is based on a, a fuel cost of 60 US dollars per barrel. Um, so at current fuel prices, a lot more is down below that line. So all of that is, in a way, reminders the benefits of energy efficiency are, are legion. Um, the minister has highlighted uh, many of them. Um, the, uh, the, the idea, for instance, uh, one of the uh, ones which are perhaps not always adequately factored into our uh, investment decisions, the reduced energy infrastructure costs. Uh, uh, we have mechanisms for looking at uh, investment in uh, in uh, utility growth, for instance, in, in building new power plants and so on. But the kind of investment that the uh, minister and the government is making now in efficiency is also delivering um, um, major benefit. And that's not often seen as, I, thought, I suppose, an infrastructural uh, investment. Um, the Better Energy Program, the uh, uh, ambition of uh, a million building upgrades across uh, all of the sectors offer uh, really huge uh, uh, benefits uh, to Ireland and to the occupiers of those buildings, in other words, the citizens. Um, the, the aims of, of the program, um, uh, and the way I put this uh, first one, is that it's not so much the, the buildings that we need to focus on, but it is the, the people who use those buildings and enabling them to be more energy efficient, recognizing that some of the technical improvements that, we will, uh, that will be delivered will deliver benefits which are not only in energy, that we will hear about a, a rebound factor so that some of the uh, uh, benefits are taken in improved uh, comfort, uh, which will also we'll see health benefits and so on. There's a, a major issue of uh, protecting the energy poor and um, reducing uh, the, this anomaly where um, in the past the tendency was to um, provide support to uh, the, those uh, facing challenges of energy affo affordability which enabled uh, them to buy the most expensive fuel and to burn it with the least efficiency. Um, uh, these programs are designed to uh, address that, uh, that anomaly. The employment one is something which we will uh, be hearing about. The energy security and environmental performance, of course. Um, but today is particularly about things like the uh, supply chain, the skills, the business models. So in other words, in building market-based uh, programs, which uh, also compared with the programs that we uh, described last year, we have a much clearer, I think, a single brand bringing a plethora of individual uh, programs which might have made great sense to, to us, but maybe didn't make as much sense to those at whom the programs were targeted. And uh, we're recognizing that we're going to hear a lot today about uh, new ways of financing, finance activity. But let us for a moment just pause to think of the, the, the requirements that we're putting on those who are to carry out this work, because really we're looking to a new industry to emerge. Um, the construction industry has gone through a pretty traumatic e experience, and maybe um, there's 
uh, some degree, uh, you have no uh, a lack of sympathy and associate, almost associating construction, the construction industry with the problems that we face. Um, we need an efficient construction industry and an, an industry that can to deliver on the targets that we're um, uh, describing. Um, we need con construction also as an engine for economic growth. And that industry needs to have uh, the capacity to develop the necessary skills, to uh, invest in innovation and R&D, and to come up with uh, new business models so that, um, uh, Minister quoting um, John Fitzgerald, the hassle factor is a thing of the past. The idea that people are struck with terror at the prospect of builders uh, arriving in their homes. Um, we, uh, the industry needs to, to rethink its model uh, so that recognizing that working in someone's uh, living room is a very different uh, situation from working on a greenfield site. Um, some of the uh, achievements uh, to date, uh, bringing, bringing together the, uh, the predecessor programs and uh, programs over the, last, over the last couple of years, uh, you can see that the numbers uh, are really uh, very substantial and the benefits are several, and reminding that uh, people employed, of course, are also uh, contributing uh, to, to the economy. Um, we published uh, late last year a, a roadmap, 2050, a series of roadmaps, and there are three more uh, shortly to be published, but one on residential energy efficiency looked at paths. It's, these are not plans, but they're scenarios, different ways of getting to the kinds of, uh, of targets which there is international consensus are required decarbonizing um, the uh, energy systems around the globe. And uh, the, these uh, diagrams, uh, which are uh, more easily seen on our, on our website, uh, map different pathways to uh, taking down the average uh, dwelling energy intensity beyond the uh, 2020 objectives right down to uh, to very low levels. And these are average figure uh, over the whole house, uh, uh, building stock, uh, the old, whole uh, residential building stock, um, and, and not just the, not the, just the, uh, the new build, of course. Um, some of the challenges faced in, in the program in better energy homes, um, the, the kind of level that is being uh, achieved not just in the Irish programs, but other uh, retrofit programs uh, internationally, uh, is probably only uh, of the order of about half of what the optimal level of, uh, of improvement uh, would, be, would be indicated. And this brings uh, one of the, the big challenges that we're addressing today, and we'll hear, I think, some of the international experience from the International Energy Agency, as well as from uh, Britain and from uh, Germany, um, a, a comprehensive whole building approach being, being uh, needed. And the, the models would, would indicate that uh, a, about a 5% of the stock uh, being uh, improved uh, annually. Now, I put a quote there um, from an American source saying that, uh, and this was a, global, uh, a recent global survey, saying no jurisdiction is currently reaching even 2% per annum. That's not true. Uh, this country is, is uh, uh, close to t twice that figure, and perhaps it's for that reason that in 10 days' time, I think, in, uh, uh, the Alliance for Saving Energy in uh, Washington, D.C. will award Ireland uh, its international award for retrofit uh, activity, because I think the Irish, the retrofit programs, have uh, attracting international uh, interest. In, on the uh, non-domestic side, in better energy uh, workplaces, um, um, again, significant investment is being, is being made uh, there and significant uh, savings are, are being achieved. And the minister uh, mentioned the figure, the grant support of uh, 11 and a half million this year. Um, uh, this, this will uh, um, leverage an investment of 50, about 50 million euro um, uh, in this kind of work. And I, I just take a couple of examples from uh, uh, the recent, uh, recent years. Um, uh, there's an example there in Eli Lilly and Kinsale taking an energy efficient design uh, project. Uh, 
realizing 600,000 uh, euro in annual energy savings and the payback on that investment uh, in two years. And the Green Isle, uh, Green Isle Foods uh, example is a heat recovery project in refrigeration, um, generating, uh, recovering the, the heat from the fridge pro refrigerant processes, uh, now providing all the hot water requirements for, for uh, cleaning and reducing the gas requirement by over 80%. The scale of savings to be achieved uh, in the, uh, the industrial and um, business sector is really uh, extraordinary. And uh, there is, I suppose, a, a degree of frustration that, uh, let's say, uh, the experienced minister pointed to the savings, 10% savings in year one uh, with our experience in going, say, to 2,000 uh, small, small businesses. Uh, and people don't seem to have the time to, to uh, uh, implement these kind of, these kind of savings. Uh, the the uh, experience of the large in, industry energy network, of course, is, 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 a, is a great one. Um, uh, and that's, again, one which has attracted uh, international uh, interest, um, very substantial savings, uh, the cumulative uh, savings we're, we're seeing the, in companies that have been engaged in this now and this operating for uh, close to 15 years are achieving about 40% savings, year on year, ratcheting further savings on, on really excellent performance, earning Ireland a, a reputation as a place for leadership in this area and generating business. Um, uh, we, when you were with us, Minister, we uh, mentioned the case of the PM Group winning two very substantial contracts recently um, uh, overseas for bringing this, the expertise uh, le learned here elsewhere. Now the, the challenge um, and the kind of responses, I think the really interesting uh, developments we're going to hear uh, about uh, some of these today as, uh, as the market gears up for uh, these, these opportunities and to address the challenge that the program for government uh, places before this whole area um, with the engagement now of the energy utilities, with the emergence of, of uh, a, a business involved in drawing together um, uh, energy savings and starting to uh, look at the opportunities for, for trading these in, in energy, energy markets. Uh, as we see uh, new businesses emerge, new ESCOs, we're very keen to see an increase in ESCO activity and the commercial involvement in that area. Uh, uh, horizontal diversification in, in the way companies take on uh, new kinds of roles or transfor transform themselves from, say, building contractors into uh, a new kind of uh, integrated deliver, uh, ser service deliveries. And some of the most exciting things, and maybe here in Croke Park it's uh, uh, appropriate to refer to the 10K initiative, the 10,000 jobs, uh, GA initiatives, uh, working through GA clubs, and a number of pilots now underway, um, building on the, the enthusiasm and commitment that communities can bring to changing the current situations. Um, so a lot of, our, uh, of the work that we'll be hearing about is moving from the current situations of grants and self-financing and uh, uh, perhaps a, a degree of fragmented delivery to uh, a situation where with the new financing offer uh, options we're talking about, um, with the market in the uh, driving place in this and a much more integrated uh, delivery. Um, that, that issue of, of, of delivery, um, in order to deliver on the um, really ambitious very uh, mass scale uh, challenge and also to tackle the, the deeper, the more ambitious uh, retrofit. Uh, we see lots of uh, developments being required. And of course, um, the current phase, very, very important one in putting the, the codes and standards and building the competence in the industry so that it can take on, uh, take on this challenge. The quality issue, of course, is, is central. Um, the technical standards, um, the, these uh, targets are ambitious. They, they must prove uh, successful. Um, the uh, customer experience has to be a, posi a positive one. Now, surveys, 
and uh, towards the end of the day we'll be hearing uh, uh, of uh, some of the experience here which is which is very uh, positive but I, I would uh, uh, remind as, a, as an escaped uh, academic uh, uh, minister maybe I'd be allowed to remind that there is also need for research in this area to underpin uh, the de these, these developments. Um, the one-stop shops, the kind of things that, uh, say, B&Q is pioneering there in the west of Dublin, the packaging of, in of measures. So the, in the short term, very attractive measures are coupled with the things which call for uh, longer pay payback periods, and we're hearing a lot about the finance options. So um, I would conclude by um, reiterating that this is an important activity. There is great act, uh, opportunity for, for fresh thinking, for joining up the actions of industry and business of the various agencies and of, of government. We've got to do it right. Um, there's an unfortunate experience in the building industry where thing, when there is sudden change, there's building failure. That's why I keep emphasizing this matter of doing things properly, doing things with, uh, competently and with proper standards. And there is lots more work because uh, the dual challenge of building scale and building depth uh, are very challenging, but the rewards will be great. And uh, last year, I, I, or previously certainly I've used this uh, quote from the New York Times, the ne next great industry will be energy technology. But a second bite that may be particularly relevant today, quotation from Time magazine, a recent issue, this may sound too good to be true. It's the uh, U.S., of course, maybe has a, 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 a learning curve on this one. The U.S. has a renewable energy resource that is perfectly clean, remarkably cheap, surprisingly abundant, and immediately available. This miracle juice goes by the distinctly boring name of energy efficiency. Um, and the illustration below is a carbon positive uh, industrialized dwelling from uh, uh, Japan, a lifetime carbon positive. Thank you very much.